Stick with us as we show you how as two complete beginners we converted our garage from this to this. Everything from creating the openings to doing the plumbing, installing the kitchen, the floor, the works. And I'm Richard. And in this video we'll be giving you an overview of how as complete novice DIYers living in France we converted our garage space into living accommodation. And we truly were novices. At the start of this process all we had done was decorating and putting the odd shelf up and that was it. Which was part of the problem because I don't think we really believed no, that we could do no. this project. And we were also frightened to get started because we knew once we did we were committed to the end. And we were worried about the results that we would get when we had no skills or know-how. Yeah. And it would be wrong of us to portray this as a, an easy project, an easy, easy process. And over the, the course of it, we experienced all the emotions. There were a, a load of times when we bitterly regretted ever having started. But then there are lots of positive moments when you achieve something and you look back and you feel great about yourself. That's true. And this series of videos documents our journey and our learnings. And in the process, we hope that it'll give a little bit of belief too. Belief is a, you know, a good word as well, because it is crazy to think that when pretty much all you have done is picked up a paintbrush, that you can convert a garage to living accommodation. But you can. Because we did. Because we did. <laughs> so with that, we're going to move into the video, which will start with a floor plan to put the project in context a bit. So let's go. Now, the blue line here actually divides the area that, that we've converted. So um, this section here remains as a garage. And to give you an idea, we could probably get four or so cars in there quite comfortably. And this area ho over here is the section that we've converted. It amounts in total to around 74 square meters. Where you see red lines on the walls, that's where we've created openings or where we have done something to an existing opening. Now all of the openings here, so this one, so one, two, three, four, five, all of those were completely new openings in um, structural walls that needed lintels put in from scratch. So we had everything to do. The other ones uh, were a little more simple as things were already in place, but it involved perhaps cutting of walls and things like that. So. Now that you can see, you've got a pretty good overview of what it was we were doing, uh, let's get straight into the video. This is our house prior to the renovation. It was built around 1988 and it's located in the south of France near Papignon. The ground floor of the house is basically completely garage and the first floor living accommodation. This is the south facing wall and the undercover wood store to the left there, both of which I'll come back to later. Now, if we take a look inside, you can see what we had to work with, which was basically uh, a simple, plain concrete, a reinforced concrete floor and bare breeze block walls. It um, is nothing flash, simply put, a large garage used as a storage area. Now, for the conversion, what we actually chose to do was to purchase steel lintels, which had been cut to size rather than to make in situ reinforced concrete lintels, as that seemed the simplest option for us. We'll share all the costs in a future video. But before we could actually start creating the openings, we had to remove around 60 centimetres in depth of um, the surrounding land from the, the two walls of the house that we we're creating openings on. And although initially we tried to do this by hand with a spade, we did realise pretty quickly that that was um, futile and stupid and so we uh, hired a mini digger to do it. Once the earthworks had been done, we marked up and started cutting the openings. And with the help from Tony, Maddie's brother, we created seven openings totaling more than 11 meters uh, and installed all the lintels and all the windows over around 14 days. Now, what you don't see here is what we did with all of the removed block work, which luckily we've been able to use uh, as hardcore for a future parking area. This was particularly useful because it meant we didn't have to do multiple trips to the dump to get rid of all of the block work. 
And it's really only once you start knocking the wall down that you begin to appreciate just how much rubble there comes from creating uh, not necessarily a very big opening. So this saved us an enormous amount of time. So this is now actually the old wood store, which just had an earth floor. And um, hence we needed to put a new floor in, floor in from scratch. And we went down the route of a beam and block floor. So we started off with um, kind of a concrete base, which put in place some drainage pipes we needed to sort out, followed by a beam and block floor laid on um, appropriate supports at each end. And uh, then another screed on top onto which we eventually then tiled, and you'll see later, as this is actually the entrance hall. After that, we moved on to the metal stud work, which was simply a joy to do because whilst it took a bit of time, you know, it was pretty uh, straightforward. Decent tin snips, angle grinder and gloves, and you're good to go. The white box you see there is actually the pump, which pumps all of the grey water waste out of the kitchen and of the downstairs cloakroom sink. And more on that in a later video, because that was quite an interesting one to do. Now, there will be a more detailed video coming out on the subfloor in the not too distant future. But uh, briefly what we did was we laid wooden joists onto the concrete floor and then infilled that with Salatex. Then we taped all of the Salatex together to give us another uh, vapor barrier. And on top of that, we put 22 mil chipboard. For the ceiling, rather than going down the pretty standard plasterboard ceiling route, at least that's how it is here in France, we decided to do planks. And so these are the batons going on the ceiling to which we then nailed and glued the, uh, the planks in place. And that's worked really well, I think, anyhow. So you'll see that later on. Although doing the plasterboard, that was really quite fun because you would make such progress so quickly. And uh, that was really, really rewarding. But then we got to doing all of the taping and jointing. And uh, that is completely the opposite. Now, I'm sure I'm not the quickest guy in the world at doing this, having never done it before. But to give you an idea, this is the first um, go. So I've just put the first coat on and uh, put the tape in. But on top of that then, I'll do two more uh, coats over that as standard, getting progressively wider each time to make sure we get a nice uh, smooth surface between the two boards, you know, with no undulations. And then quite often though, on top of that, I might do one or two more thin coats or even have just little imperfections here and there that I'd have to sort out. So each joint took me a long time, you know, and in between each of these, you're sanding down as well. And whilst it was nice to see the progress and you could appreciate between each coat how much better it was getting, there is no doubt that for me as a beginner, it did take me a long time. But at the end of the day, the result is good and, uh, it worked out brilliant. This was our first time out installing a kitchen and perhaps you know, not the best way to start because it's a pretty big kitchen, but it worked out just fine. And uh, the thing that we learned, I guess, was the laser level is absolutely your friend. It's your best friend because you need it to be perfectly level. So the laser level, the spirit level, and actually the router for the kitchen worked on were of prime importance there. 
The floor, we put down laminate flooring, uh, was a joy to do, a bit like the plasterboard on the walls, you know, really, really quick, quick result. But of course, unlike the plasterboard, no taping and jointing to do afterwards. So that worked out really, really well indeed. And so that is the story of how we turned our very big but very dingy garage into what for us is a fantastic open plan living area. It is not an exaggeration when I say that for our family, it has changed our lives for the positive on a daily basis. Now, that being said, our renovation journey is far from finished. Yes, we've completed the garage conversion and we are super pleased. And to remind ourselves of what we've done, we've converted 74 square meters of garage into living accommodation. From a quick look on Google just now, as I understand it, a new build house in the UK these days is about 76 square meters. So it gives you an idea of scale. Now in the coming weeks, we're gonna be releasing a whole load of videos which focus in on certain elements of the conversion that we've done. So things like creating openings uh, in load bearing walls, uh, plumbing systems in France, looking at um, pumping gray waste out if you're below the sewage level, doing flooring, lots of different things. If you think the parts of the process of a conversion might be of interest to you, then I'd encourage you to subscribe. Also, if you're interested to know the cost of converting, in France, then that's also a video we're going to come out with very shortly, which will tell you exactly how much it cost us to convert 74 square meters of space in France and compare it to the quotes we got from artisans. And they were big. So you'll be, I think, pretty shocked at some of the, the differences there. Um, I would encourage you to subscribe to the channel and to click the bell icon. That's the only way you'll actually get notifications when we post new videos. So with that, I wish you well, and until next time, goodbye.